Hello, welcome to another awesome video. Today we're recording. I'm, a, I'm saying this from a Soundomatic Universal. The Soundomatic Universal from 1977. Looking at this device, it looks like a cassette deck, and that's part of it. But there's a little bit more to this mystery than just a simple cassette deck. It's got the standard cassette deck looking stuff, but up there at the top, what are these other buttons? Restart, Pulse, Proj 1, Proj 2. And on top of the mysterious buttons and unusual connectors, this thing is built like a tank. It's got a very industrial feel to it. Metal, well-constructed, three-prong plug. It's obviously a cassette deck plus something else. What do you think it's for? For a movie projector or radio show or movie. Well, have you ever heard of PowerPoint? PowerPoint is boring. Well, this thing actually helps you create a PowerPoint-style audiovisual presentation. And the cassette portion, of course, handles the audio part of the presentation. But back in the days, before there were computers and laptops, this worked with something called a slide projector. So what's a slide projector? I happen to have one right here, which we're going to look at in a second. It's similar to a modern video projector, but instead of projecting a signal from your laptop, it projects slides. A lot of people use these slide projectors back in the 1970s to share their vacation photos. Uh, this particular type of projector uses a carousel of slides. It's a plastic tray that the uh, light shines through your photos you get back from a film developer. But even if you're too young to remember slide projectors or seen one used in real life, you have probably seen them in a movie. If you think back to the beginning of Jurassic Park, uh, you might remember the lunch where there's all these pictures with charts in the background. That's a bunch of slide projectors displaying those images. And before the days of flat panel monitors being in every office in America, a slide projector was the way you got large images into a business meeting. It would have been a great tool in the 70s or 80s or somewhere else, but today we have computers and stuff, so we can just look at them better than a slide projector. Yeah, yeah, this was a good way to share photos back a long time ago before social media or even camcorders or even larger televisions or a way to get your photos on a screen. This was it. You pretty much could pass around little four by six prints, or if you did a slide projector, it was a different experience. You got the room dark and you had a very large full color picture so it's a really interesting way to display your photos for people. So where does the Optisonic Soundomatic come in? As you may recall earlier, the carousel that I showed had a ton of slides on it, 140 to be exact. So one carousel could contain the film from several vacations or events. And on the business side, if you were making a sales presentation, how would you remember what to say? Optisonic had been in the business since the 60s, helping people create these audiovisual presentations for sales. And when the compact cassette came out, they filed a patent for a device that controlled a slide projector with tones on a cassette tape. So it's really easy to use. You just connect the included microphone, then you narrate your slideshow in advance, polishing your presentation the way you want. Use the pulse button to tell the slide projector to advance the slide. And during both recording and playback, the Soundomatic is connected to the slide projector's remote control input. So the picture and sound are always in sync. Here is our slideshow about visiting the woods. First, we went into the woods. Then, we saw Bigfoot's nesting spot. Then, Bigfoot attacked. Ah! And then we, and only two made it out alive. So just to advance the slideshow works really well. Uh, there's also a couple of special features. One feature is the ability to send a signal to the tape that causes the tape to pause itself which I could see this being useful in an educational setting, like for example, if you wanted to ask a quiz question. First, we display the slide. Then we ask the question. Question, is the Fort Wilderness Railroad still in operation? Let's pause this presentation while you write down your answer. Now, if you notice what happened there, the tape automatically went into pause mode and the restart light lit up until the instructor clicks restart gets it going again. There is also a remote restart jack on the back. If you said it's no longer in operation, you are correct. Let's move on. This is great for simple presentations and even quizzes, but what if you really wanted to wow your audience? You could use the other special feature, which is the ability to control not one, but two slide projectors on the same cassette. Now, why would you want to do this? One example is the Jurassic Park example where you're just showing a lot of information. Another might be if you have slide projectors with crossfading capability and you want to show some 
cool transition set to music or something. So here I've got two Kodak slide projectors. The one on the left is the newer model from the early 80s. The one on the right is like late 60s, early 70s. Um, and you could really tell that the one on the left is more no frills. The, the earlier model has these nice side wood grain panels and it's got a plastic lid. It's got a lens sliding cover. It's got a built-in auto advance timer. Just a lot of features the newer model doesn't have. But unfortunately, it also has an advanced problem that these older models develop. A plastic part breaks off inside, and this is fairly well documented on the internet. So in order to fix this, all I had to do is replace this old plastic piece with a new one I found on Amazon, and I was back in business. Here's what a dual projector presentation might look like. Advanced projector one. Advanced projector two. Advanced both projectors. One, two. In order to use two projectors, you simply set the projector switch to one, two, or both before pressing the pulse button. It also seems like if you hold the pulse button down too long, the projector will advance twice, but I guess you just get used to that if you use this thing often. Anyway, I um, also tried using a cassette adapter and playing a tone sweep into it to see if I could trick it into advancing, but didn't quite find it. Uh, might have had the volume or length off, uh, but I'm sure I could find it if I tried hard enough. But overall, I thought this was a really cool device that brought together some household technologies in a new and interesting way. I'm barely old enough to remember slide projectors, but these little slide advancer presentation things must have enjoyed some period of popularity. This 1972 Popular Mechanics article shows that there are a bunch of different methods people use to sync up with their slide projectors, including foil and reel-to-reel -reel and built-in tapes and stuff like this. But when I think of automation like this, I always think of the robots at Disney World in both the Hall of Presidents and the Carousel of Progress. I think I add Joe Biden to that one. I don't know. It depends. These animatronic robots have been around since the 1960s, and today they're probably programmed with code. But uh, back then, they used the same type of technology as the Soundomatic, a special control tone recorded on a tape. You've got to listen to me. Elementary chaos theory tells us that all robots will eventually turn against their masters and run amok. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment if you have any experience with the Soundomatic or slide synchronizers or tape based automation from the uh, 60s and 70s. See you next time for another awesome video. Bye bye. Advanced both projectors. One, two,